So um, what I was asked to talk about is leading with a vision. Um, so first, get up and introduce yourself to Sunny. Just kidding. Um, it's kind of funny. It's almost following with a vision because this is at the end of the day. So it's a little bit of an opportunity recap. I know Rachel's going to do that. But um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the broader vision. And it's been great to resonate with all the things people have been saying all throughout the day. Um, so I'll, t I'll try not to steal your thunder and recapping because I was going to do that with those notes. Um, I will just stick to my mission here. It is way too late in the day to look at something like that, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? So, so, but I, but my, my effort really was, to how can I put everything I want to do on one page? And yes, don't, don't read it. Don't read it. But the idea is that at council, um, it's a new role. I'm the new chief sustainability officer. It would be foolish for me to say, oh, yeah, we've never done sustainability at council before. I mean, actually, a number of people in this room would probably try to kill me. Um, so we have been doing sustainability for a long time at Auckland Council. We've not had a chief sustainability office. And this is a unique opportunity to get some stature, some, some leverage, and a bit of visibility to actually make and accelerate um, you know, what we're trying to do. So, so really, the, the key to that target right there is mainstreaming sustainability, I'd say, at council and beyond. The rest of the stuff you can just ignore. But I'll break down the priority areas, just so you know what we are doing in our office. And it does relate to the rest of, the, of what we're doing at, at Auckland Council. But really, our, our team, small team of 10, we look at five priority areas. And you don't have to worry about number two, three, four, and five, really, because our key number one priority is to engage and communicate sustainability. And what that looks like, well, it's really about understanding the value of sustainability. I mean, it's all the stuff we talked about today, so I can skip over this part as well. Um, and, and really to engage. It's to engage with all Aucklanders on something that is now a lot more compelling, a lot more personal, and relevant to their daily lives. So isn't it too late for that as well? But I'm going to smack you around with the Auckland plan. This is the Auckland plan. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming everybody brought, brought their big stack copy to here. Um, I bring it everywhere I go. Um, it helps me bike up hills a lot slower. Um, this is, if I were going to encapsulate what we want to do at Auckland Council in terms of our vision, because we're leading with the vision, it would be these boxes. There are six transformational shifts and seven outcomes that what success looks like is this. And one might say, oh, yes. This is sustainability. It's a green Auckland. It's radically improving the quality of urban living. It's moving to outstanding transport. Sure, yeah, it's all of those things. And, and it's, it's actually everything. Because when we talk about sustainability, I think traditionally we've been talking about a little bit too narrow a focus. And what we want to do, and I think what you're clearly already on board with, is taking sustainability to the bigger picture and making it a little bit more of a big tent process. And then, of course, livability. You know, you can't really talk about the world's most livable city without talking about sustainability. I mean, it's, it is key and integral and underpins our success. So instead of going through those boxes, now, wasn't that a little bit painful at about 5.30 when I'm standing between you and Rachel Brown, which is enough of a difficulty, and wine and networking? The, the wine, yeah, yeah. OK, I better speed up, because I want some wine. Um, you could do this differently, though. So instead of, in, instead of kind of breaking it down by boxes, uh, um, you know, Perfect segue to, 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 to what if, um, and, and imagine, um, that guy was just was talking about. So I'd like you to imagine a city, like Auckland perhaps, that deeply cares for its people. It, it actually cares about fairness, and kids growing up in Manurewa or Maracana or Mount Albert have the same shot that every other kid does. Same. That'd be cool. Imagine a city that's renowned for its high-tech industry that really gets uh, innovation, that really gets how to do economic prosperity, maybe beyond being great for milk powder. I mean, no offense to milk powder, but there's a lot more here that we can do. Imagine a city where you can swim anywhere you wanted to. Imagine a city where you, the bush and the beach were um, you know, beautiful places to be, but our urban environments were also the same kind of real, you know, you'd feel at home there. You could breathe the air. There's less carbon impact, in fact, perhaps no carbon input in the atmosphere. Can you imagine a city where we had a flourishing art and culture, where we really understood, respected, and celebrated our Maori identity? And people came to Auckland, which some do, but more people came to Auckland to actually learn from us about how to do livability right. And then imagine getting around a city, maybe Auckland, that actually the transport and, and moving around the city wasn't a hindrance, but it was actually a joy. It was actually fun. And people connected along their way to, to their destinations. And, and maybe we were some of the happiest people on the planet. 
Because that stuff doesn't really fit in boxes. I mean, that stuff is in our heads and in our hearts. And, and those are the things that, um, at least you know, when, I, when, I, when I say that sort of imagined story, that's what resonates for me and, and, and the city that I want to see um, in the next coming decades. I want to see that tomorrow. But we can't really rest. We're all, we've got a beautiful city. It's, it's amazing what this place is. You can tell I, I'm, I'm not from here, and I am enamored and smitten with Auckland in just the two years I've been here. Um, but if we sort of rest on our laurels, we know we're not going to get to that world's most livable city. We're not going to get to what I just described and had you imagine. Um, there are all sorts of other cities competing. And even if it's not a competition thing, there are cities that, that are doing better than we are. And so we can't really rest on our good looks and charm. I mean, maybe you all can. It's a beautiful room. Um, but this city here, it is beautiful, but we, we really need to accelerate progress to get where we're going. We've done some things at Auckland Council and with our CCOs. The obvious, most, uh, I think, illustrative example is at the waterfront, where we went from the first day I arrived in New Zealand. Uh, it looked like that when I came for a visit about 15 years ago. And when I came to live here, it looked like that. And it freaked me out. It was just so cool, where you can actually create a place for people. I like going back and forth between those slides. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah, I mean, just, just imagine. Could you imagine this? It's, it's ridiculous. Can you imagine that back then? No, you can't. I mean, it, it's almost impossible to imagine. But someone did imagine it, and we actually did it. Looking to the future, we would like to think of the same kind of things. In whatever your industry and whatever you care about in Auckland, there, there is a vision for that. There is a, you know, there is a, um, a Queen Street and, and a Customs or a Key Street that look, I guess this is Key Street, right, that, that looks like this. You know, you, you'll be able to walk around downtown or anywhere. We, the, is that a building or is that a tree? What, you know, kind of what is that? Um, the, the natural and the urban environment, you know, they, they, there's a synergy between the two. And that's the kind of vision we want to get to. Um, so I guess, you know, I did say it's, it's been seven, it's, I have seven minutes left, but I'm going to try to only use like three or four. Um, I've got three little points that I just wanted to make at the end. And, it w and, and I'll let Rachel kind of bring all the threads together um, just to make it a little quicker. But, but the three main points are, are, are this. One is that um, you've you got to be bold and be courageous and try some stuff that, is, that might fail. Um, this is Times Square in New York. This is the handiwork of Michael Bloomberg and Jeanette Sadek Khan, um, who's been to Auckland and hopefully you went to her talk. Um, this, this did not look like this. Uh, not that long ago. Um, this was 100% cars and metal boxes and people not talking to each other. And it wasn't really good business, because you can't buy a lot of things when you're, in, when you're actually in a car. And you can't park in Times Square, really. But now it's 100% people, almost 100% people. It's a major transformation. It was one of those things that someone dared to do and actually succeeded. But there are a number that people have dared to do and, and have failed. And we have to be OK with that, because otherwise, we won't get to this. The second thing is. Um, be great communicators. It's a little predictable, because that's our whole theme today. But we've learned some fascinating stuff from everybody who's, who's spoken. We've learned about being really honest and transparent. We've learned about telling the truth. Um, and, and it's that authenticity that people really resonate with if we speak their values and in language they understand. Um, I do not understand your jargon and all those squiggly lines. The third thing I want to leave you, and it's the last thing, is, um, is we have to have um, an embracing. We have to embrace change. And we all, we all do that. We're at the cutting edge of our industries. I think most of us think we have the best job in the world, at least I do. Um, but we have to be right at that, that, really, that edge of embracing the new. This is an obvious example in Germany of the old way of doing things and a new way of doing things right in front of it. And pretty soon, that old way of doing things will be gone. Um, but that's really what, you know, that's what we're, as change agents, trying to do, is to embrace the change, use it as an opportunity, as a lever for that vision. That leads us back to the vision that vision of what we want to get to. And it doesn't have to be my vision. It doesn't have to be what I just said. It could be something completely um, in your own words and the values of you and your customers um, and your business. But there is that vision. And this all cycles back to it. So I'm not going to use my last two minutes. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm not going to stand between you and wine. Um, but thank you very much. And actually, the one thing I should have mentioned after all those great social media tips um, was um, Sustainable AKL is my new Twitter account for the Chief Sustainability Office. So follow me. Cool. Kia ora.